Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to John Nutt, the main man over at Fight Circus, Full Metal Dojo, and all sorts of combat sports magic over in Thailand. Uh, John, uh, we obviously know each other very well. I'm excited yeah. to see what you're doing over there. It's always fun. Your latest project, Running Man. We've got Felony Charles Bennett fighting two people. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I mean, first and foremost, wouldn't you say leveling up, right? Your MMA symmetrical. I would say that this is the biggest MMA symmetrical fight. We, you know, we, come on now. We've had the crazy Russian stuff over the last couple of years. We've had like the fight circus banking no money. We've made them into, into people. We've seen them grow. We've seen them grow as athletes. We've seen them grow in competition. But this is the first time where you've actually had somebody that's kind of a name, right? Even Even if my video did like really, really well and it went viral, it went viral because I wasn't a name. Right. Uh, so to have felony Charles Bennett, who, by the way, for everybody that's watching, he hates being called crazy horse. I've made that mistake a few times. He just hates being called crazy horse. Uh, uh, felony. He's coming into Thailand. I think September 20, 22nd, 21st. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be doing, doing the promos and doing all the movie stuff like with him, all of our cinematic angles we'll be doing with him. Uh, I mean, he is not, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, he's not the Arnold Schwarzenegger character that everybody wa wants or thinks he might be of the, the Running Man the Musical. Uh, that, that's kind of held off to Walter, if you will, but he is the main event, and it is him versus Bank and No Money. I do think it's an, a, who knows, right? Immediate re rematch clause was written in there, Right. So, I mean, who knows uh, what's going to happen with Felony versus two dudes that are obviously smaller than him but have so much less experience in fighting. Key details. Uh, when, where, what time, where can we watch? The broadcast goes live on uh, – the broadcast for the world goes live on uh, www.fightcircus.tv. .tv. Uh, on September 30th, uh, 8 p.m. Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. I mean, obviously, we are going hard, and mo I would say the majority of the fan base is in the States. You know what I mean? The ma majority of the fan base that's really loving us, that's really supporting us, that's making this thing work when nobody thought it would, right? Um, so we're doing that. We're going after those people. And, uh, yeah, September 30th, broadcast live on the website fightcircus.tv um and if you can be here in phuket i would highly suggest that you can and then then again it's like a rave right we hold it in a little secret location aka the junkyard theater uh you know very limited audience very much a dinner and a show this one right it's gonna be a it, i mean this is a three-act musical andrew it's a, it's a three act musical. I I personally sing like four songs in this thing, but the junkyard theater being on, on involved, like you know, we've got the creme de la creme. We've got Phuket's finest in terms of guys that can really entertain: thespians, actors, break dancers, um, singers. We have a lady boy, by the way. This this woman named Hart kills it, kills it. I mean, um, she's. She was a Simon Cabaret person, I believe. So, uh, wow. you know, being on, being on the island and now after the, the pandemic and now the Fight Circus is actually kicking ass and taking names and all, all, all that type of stuff. We have a lot of fun partners and a lot of the tourism that we're, we've are we been trying to press all these years, other people see us now in their, as their outlet. So expect uh, expect Lady Boy, what, what, Cabaret, Cabaret, Combat, right? Finest Cabaret. At one hand, we have Felony versus Two and Letway. And on the other hand, we have Cabaret, Combat, Karaoke Contests in a Running Man musical. So, Fantastic. new entertainment, all is what I'm saying. But yeah, entertainment's your middle name. And the last uh, outing was your birthday party featuring Tyson yeah. Fury launching a birthday cake into your face. For anybody who missed that one, what went down there? Dude, that was a, again, so we were planning on a fight circus, right? We we were <laughs> getting set, getting ready. We knew Tyson Fury was coming into town. Um, we got in touch with people that are all, all friendly people that are all working together. And we were able to make it happen. And he came and we were going to do a little karaoke battle with him, uh, which he got to do. He killed it. 
Um, you know, what do you do? He did a little Sweet Caroline well, uh, and a little uh, Bye Bye Miss American Pot, right? And I mean, yeah, he, he crushed it. He also decided to crush a cake into my face because I, you know, we told him to just go with it. We told, the thing is, is everybody that we discussed this with, especially just by the way, like some other promoters in the game and, you know, you know who you are because we're friends, right? Um, people were like, he's going to be really, really difficult to work with. We didn't think so at all. We thought he was great. And what was hilarious is we only wrote like this, like we like this little part for him. All you have to do is this and do it to the best of your ability and and like kind of however you want. And he came in and like knew everybody's name. You know, he's calling out the the DJ for messing up the music intro. He was a he was an entertainer's entertainer, right? He was a professional's professional. Um, and he liked it so much that you know he he obviously stayed he wants to work again we're we're talking about what's going to happen in the future looking at some sometime around i think valentine's day 2024 you know so yeah super fun right and to okay. go in like such a short time for fight, fight circus to go from like you know having bob sap who obviously was the seed right he's the man having bob sap to like kind of a bob sap and rampage to then a, a Tyson Fury, and then we're bringing the 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 DJ beats down, coming back to felony, and then we're gonna bring it up to other talent, and then we're gonna bring it, you know what I mean, and we're gonna ride this wave. So on that on fun. that Tyson Fury birthday show, you also fought twice. Can you tell us what happened, yes. and where can we watch that if we didn't catch it the first time? I think that again they have to check the website. It's it's it's, it's on www fightcircus.tv i think you have to put in your uh email address or they're they're collecting we're collecting data we're data collecting you know what i mean we're mining we're mining it um <clears throat> you can check it out there and yeah i mean bro like who you know it's, it's your birthday you're 44 you're you know you're fat you're stupid you you kind of drink too much you know what i mean but you have tyson fury and the whole fury clan big john in there uh you know for your birthday why not fight in front of him why not take a couple shots to the face right uh, i think it was all fun and games because we really we got peter denman who again soap opera star here in thailand right we got mr fight youtuber influencer here in thailand the fact that they were like yeah we want to get in the ring with you too like we think it would be funny as well they all knew the story i think that was a was, you know, Bangkok Vodka was also a sponsor of that show. They helped make uh, Tyson Fury happen as well. And uh, I would never suggest that the kids do what we do over here at Fight Circus. I am a professional. I have done these things before. I, I am basically the Steve-O of MMA, if you will. And, uh, yeah, it had, had quite a few drinks that night. Quite a few drinks. Quite a few libations. Had you had a couple? Have you had? Had you had a couple of drinks before the infamous two versus one bank and no money? I, uh, yeah, I had had a couple cocktails. Uh, I mean, dude, the stress of that day because again of the two hour pre pre show that we had to come out of nowhere with for Fight TV and and make that broadcast a success, right? Um, uh, I had I had had one or two, but nothing like nothing like on my birthday. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I would say I kept it pretty professional and pretty, pretty tight on the uh, before fighting bank and not, no money. Whereas on my birthday, clearly, clearly, uh, yeah. Because I don't know if you remember, but like the again, the ring broke on both shows. The ring didn't show up on the one where I fought bank and no money, and on this one, uh, it broke, dude. We got we had eighteen break dancers. In there from the junkyard theater, we had, we you know probably shouldn't have been doing what we were doing with it, um, and uh, it broke, you know. And luckily, we were in like your, the junkyard is a literal factory, a, a welding that you know they can solder, they can you know it's a factory, so they were able to fix it pretty pretty. I mean, it took forty five minutes to an hour. We actually canceled two fights because of it, which sucked for them, right? But I will say that when everything got back to going, it was like, you know, it's the weight off your shoulders, right? Because you your show, not really as a combat sports show. 
Like, I don't believe the UFC or any other organization can do this. If they have all shitty fights, it's just a shitty card. If I have something that is going shitty, but then you can pull it up, you know what I mean? And you make the landing and you stick the landing, right? Olivia, done. Stick the landing, right? Um, it makes it awesome. So, yeah. So, after the ring got fixed and during when the ring got fixed, I had a lot of friends in the audience. It was the birthday. You know what I mean? Paul Poole was there. I remember that guy was just pouring. Yeah. Lots of lots of beverages. Again, libations. Um, they, they make the flow. They made it a lot more fun. You, you have not been yet. I mean, you've been a part, right? But the atmosphere still, if you, if you had FMD, if you have WLC, if you have all the ones that like the atmosphere is on fire for at Fight Circus, again, remember, we keep it a little bit more private. I think there was, uh, it's going to be about 200, 250 at this uh, next show. And that's it. I mean, like, I don't put out the sold out show, the posters that say sold out, because why would you? Um, I mean, I think it's a great way of marketing, actually. But, but and that's why you would. Cause it's good marketing. But uh, for me personally, it, it we know the place is going to be jammed, right? I still think that we, in terms of other, other other promoters, have a different scorecard than I do, right? For me, I like want the best atmosphere in there for the person that's there at the moment because I'm kind of an artist, right? But uh, otherwise, I would not suggest this business model on anybody. So you become kind of the king of gimmick fights. And we are very much in an age of gimmick fights, whether you're a Jake Paul guy or, or the other Paul, uh, you know, or, you know, or Ngannou Ngannou versus Fury. Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury versus Ngannou, right? I mean, it, it is a gimmick fight. You have a dude that's never fought professional boxing before taking on the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, again, is, is this the real, real life Rocky story? I mean, I think actually Francis Ngannou's story kind of beats a dude from Philadelphia, but not in the 1970s. And not the movie because it's legendary, but you do understand what I mean. This is a real life Rocky story, and that, and yes, by definition, then this is like the the gimmick of gim all gimmick fights. Um, I mean, again, I have to, you know, it's kind of crazy because like I was there for Mayweather McGregor, like I was rose back, I was covering it with Fox Sports Asia with with you, um, and uh, I mean that is the gimmick fight that set all of this off that was the one that really made made this blaze i don't think any of these would happen if it wasn't for that and the money that they made and the show that they put on uh in terms of gambling and stuff people have to make a line right there has to be somebody that wants mcgregor to win and that was the crazy one was the great white hope right and just the irishman in general getting so many people to believe that he was was going to do it it's the, almost the same thing this time which in my opinion kind of uh like there's no way Tyson Fury should lose. There's no way. I mean, statistically, you can't even you you can't even go with it, right? You can't even like, you know, you got a goose egg to go against, right? So it doesn't really work out. People are gonna put a line on it, right? People are gonna put a line on it. I mean, and Francis is gonna be the underdog, and Francis has a chance because they all have chances because they do because it's a one night contest, right? Any given Sunday. Um, but I mean, come on now, Tyson Fury should not lose this. And then he should actually just for money's sake, go and take on Francis and MMA and lose that. And then do a third rubber match in fight circus, right? On the wheel of violence to do real mixed martial arts. That would, that's just my suggestion for those guys. You know what I mean? Well, that kind of brings me on to my next question, because do you feel like you've got skin in the game now because You've seen the evolution of Fight Circus. Like you said, you know, Bob Sapp to Rampage Jackson, former UFC champion, to Tyson Fury, baddest man on the planet, heavyweight champion of the world. And I've heard some of the names that you're being linked to. You know, we're talking about people we grew yeah. up with in Hollywood. So yeah. I've seen you uh, tweet out offers to Francis and Garner. I've seen you kind of raise an eyebrow or raise a hand towards Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. So whenever there yeah. is a crazy gimmick fight, do you feel like you should be in the conversation and that you have genuine interest in some of these guys if you made them the right offer? I mean, Thailand is an attractive destination, right? I think we should get some credit, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of love. I don't really care about it like that, though. That's not not like why we're doing it. It's not like, 
you know, I think we're the best because we have a business model that really works. Uh, we're growing. We're bringing on new people. Um, again, the U.S. loves us and we work in the margins of Thailand. So it's pretty fantastic. Um, I, I, again, we're slow right now because of how fast we're actually internally growing. Um, when other people start doing it, it's very interesting because we just call it what it is. Like we're like the most truthful people in in like the combat sports world. And that's because of my history and being in the game the way that I have and playing with the big boys, but staying and knowing my role. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's funny. Other organizations will all of a sudden rename a, a fight and not play like it's a gimmick, but it clearly is a gimmick or it's a change of rule set. And if you're doing those things, you're not really being a sport. Um, in terms of the definition of sport, right? Um, and again, one if somebody just said it was a one-night contest, then that would be fine, right? Uh, the problem is, Andrew, is again, all of the blurred lines. People like think, if you're just, like if you're a casual fan and you see somebody that's like like Jake Paul is now doing one of these gimmick fights, you know how many people I have actually hit me up that are like, you're doing the best job. Like, and I have actually nothing to do with it. But the fans are so engulfed in it and they go across the board, as you know, and they don't think of it as a business model and they don't think of it as a promotion and promotion and organization, organization. I mean, how many, like when organizations die, which happen all the time over the last 10 years, you and I have seen them come and go. Does anybody ever care when they're gone? Well, I mean, I think people miss pride. <laughs> I think people miss pride. Like I have a bunch of organizations that I miss. Right. And it's so funny. How funny on like a pro, like a, a, a fanboy geek note. I wrote this the other day on, on something that went into some post because content provision. Right. But it's like everybody's like pride never dies. Pride never dies. No, 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 no. It died. Right. Pride never dies. Pride, no, it died. It, it's gone. Like you can say pride never dies. But those shows were once in a lifetime. They're gone. You know, I who doesn't love the Ryzen, right? Who doesn't love JMMA still? I do. Nothing against it. It ain't what that was. It ain't what that was. And it's funny because, again, like, there's reality and truth, right? And then there's what we have to be in the game of combat sports promotions or entertainment promotions. You have to be a marketer and you have to be entertaining and you have to be all that stuff and that doesn't really come with truth or reality or, or any of those things Woozy, it's a wildy right? it's a <laughs> it really is it's it, it you know it's a fart yeah. in the wind it's just it's, <laughs> it's going um, well, but i mean so like i feel like i'm on a right right path just to go back to it and i also don't think anybody else is gonna like even though more people are gonna do what i do and more people are gonna do gimmick fights for sure they're not gonna do it the way that i would do it or our team would do it and so, like, I really don't care. They're not, you know, loads and loads of people are going to get into this for gimmick fights in the next two, three years. It's going to be bigger, like all of the, in my, per, just a prediction, but any of the minor leagues that are on UFC Fight Pass, uh, especially, like those, I mean, they might stay the same. Their business model might have them, so that they're, but they're probably not going to grow. They've hit the top of the ceiling there, you know, but those will stay the same or go or go away and other gimmick things will come because because especially your audience that you come with on a uh, smaller basis so if a promotion doesn't have a broadcast deal and you want to get people in the doors and your and your business model revolves around the logistics of events coordination then you're you're going to want to do gimmicks because that's gonna get more females in the door it's gonna get more more people in the door and you're gonna make more more money as a promoter and most most promoters unlike myself are in it for the uh cash and the business and trying to take over the world you know what i mean so it kind of seems like you're in the wrong industry if you're in this to make a lot of money right you're gonna have a lot of fun you're gonna create great memories and maybe have some of the best birthdays of all time but you're not necessarily going to become a rich man uh going back to what you're saying about um you know truth and reality what's interesting to me is when you were probably you know 20 years old would you have envisioned doing the things that you're doing and talking to the people you are speaking no. to uh, on that note 
Could you give us some names or some ballparks of people that you would like to see and that you actually have a realistic chance of getting on the next show or the show after that? Well, for one, like all of them are very realistic. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, my the people that we have on our team and financially just in in house, uh, we're good to go with getting a, a Tyson Fury on board. Maybe not for actual boxing, but we're we're we can have these level of people on board. So everybody's kind of right there. The people that I'm looking at, it's probably the same way that like um, be you know. The other organizations that we all kind of know. I mean, again, you're 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 in the know, and everybody I think that would be watching this would kind of know who we are and what we're doing and how the industry is going. We're not doing the same thing that the UFC is doing, right? And we're not doing the same thing that other promotions are doing. But every promotion kind of tries to take people that have a name in the industry already, right? Everyone has has done it, right? They take the guy that's the celebrity and they bring him in. I don't necessarily have to do that. I can do like, like, you know, I really want to go after actors. Um, and I'm not saying that I want to be celebrity boxing. I want to add these people into the show because I really do want to have like, like if this running man show is, is um, it goes well, then I, I plan on writing a bunch of plays that just involve combat sports in them. Like I, I plan on writing, like, like shooting a film, like a real life film, right? <clears throat> That's happening live right there. The dude that's fighting is really fighting. <laughs> you have no idea what the outcome is. That's what these like small art house in the junkyard theater plan on being. I still plan on doing my Tyler Sheridan universe. Other other fight promoters in this industry would say they plan on doing like the WWE model or the UFC model, right? And going after that Dana White's contender series, then your fight nights, then your pay-per-views with your tough enough we plan on trying to do all that type of stuff too down the line, but I plan, I'm more going after like looking at this, like Tarantino again, like, like I want it to be the Tyler Sheridan, the Harry, the, the JK Rowling. We want our universes to be like going off in a, in different directions. I wouldn't be siding. Like, I don't ever think that fight circus has to do a, a road to, right. I'm not trying to find the new talent of of the sport i'm trying to find new sports right and that just takes a lot of creativity and then getting those people into it the original question was that like who 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 am i trying to get on board uh i again i've talked to tons and tons of b movie actors like all the ones that you can imagine we got rejected by danny trejo the other day um just just time and scheduling of movies but like danny trejo on a from dust till dawn type of fight circus, right? Where but people are fighting left. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that I'm friends with all the guys from the WLC and stuff. So like we do actually plan on, even if we're not purposefully growing let way, we do plan on doing a lot of like we plan on still having let way on there. Uh WLC's rule let, let way. Because you and I were there and it obviously affected my life. And I I I think it's one of the best striking arts and, it, and it's not going to get too much love in Myanmar for the next couple of years. You know what I mean? It will get love there, but I, I can, I can, I can help push it. Um, we are going to do other games for fighting. And I mean that in two ways, one way game, literally like a carnival game, throw darts at balloon, you versus your competitor that leads to whatever competition that could be one game. Right. But then just like, basketball bleeding into fighting in some of those weird Russian Kazakhstani Tajikistani kind of leagues. We plan on doing similar ones. As you know, I, I am going to get into like the paintballing stuff, the uh, dueling for fights and the hunting human beings for fights, that type of stuff. Right. Right. But, uh, you, you know, it, it's going to go across the board. I think we will, in terms of the famous people, we will be dealing with athletes Greg Hardy is like a guy. <clears throat> Bob Saps is, has a Rolodex of, you know, everyone in the industry. He's on board. He's such a team player. Um, what I think you'd like to know more is like who, you know, like you want, you want a scandal one for you. This could be like hot. And you could like cut this part. But I talked to, I, I texted back and forth with Jason Mayhem Miller yesterday. Right. 
and I don't know if he, I don't know the situation behind him just getting busted for like choking out somebody in, in LA again. Like, I don't know if he's going back If he was on, he wasn't on parole. He was out. Like, I don't know what the situation is with him, but like, you know, it wasn't long ago that we were talking about him doing a reverse bully beatdown, right? And him being the bully, aka the prisoner, and maybe fighting two former police officers, right? He wants down to get down. You'd be surprised with how many um, former UFC fighters, former Bellator fighters, um, want to do MMA symmetrical, right? And after Rampage doing the Siamese twins. A lot of them get that it's quite the laugh. You know what I mean? They're not really going to get juiced up, but they're going to go at it. Like Siamese twins kickboxing is another one where like I've had lots and a lot of uh, known fighters be like, yeah, I'd like to take a shot at that. It's like, why would you, why would you, but I'm up for it. Let's do it. You know? So we, um, we, again, I think that after my fight went, viral the way it did and then um getting rampage on and then getting fury on everything the world is my oyster so like i really just need to to i need to walk not run and not mess up the things that i can behind the scenes and get my team really really like locked in uh guys that love it and are passionate about it and want it to grow and be with the company for you know a mr beast indefinite period of time because they don't want to go on to another job because why wouldn't you want to live on the island of co you know of, of phuket and throw the weirdest underground fights in the most exclusive coolest fight organization on, on the planet like it's it's a dream come true right yes sir while um, others are while others are in like crappy places and you know because you've <laughs> been to those crappy places uh, we're going to wrap up with the same quick fire that I give to most uh, UFC fighters. So uh, I'll you you leave yours open to male, female, combat sports personalities. Up to you. So best wrestler right now in in MMA. In MMA, the best wrestler right now, <clears throat> man. Just quick you fire. You know again, huh? Just quick fire. Oh, we're we're going we're going fast. Going quick fire. Yeah. Oh, man. Back in yeah, exactly. Okay. Start again. And I am not doing this with UFC people in mind right now. Okay. okay. So screw that. Sorry, everybody that you've had is like going with UFC and they're like, wait a second. Is it Falkanovsky or Aljamain Sterling? Yeah. Yeah. Is Sterling, no wrestler. Well, I mean, I pretty much Bobby tell Blair. them, I, don't to, know where I, go I with pretty that. much okay. make them stick to UFC fighters. But uh, look, combat sports wise, best wrestler. This is quick fire. Off the top Best of your head. In the game right now, 50% has to be bank, 50% has to be mo no money. MMA symmetrical champions, bank and no money. Best wrestlers in the game, bar none. Next question. Who's the funniest? Who is the funniest human being? Felony. Wow. I don't know how that even happened right there. That's actually related to the person in the last question. Who's bank and no money's opponent? Felony Charles Bennett is like the old dirty bastard of mixed martial arts. He is straight up comedy. Right? I mean, watch the guy. Who's the most annoying? Uh, huh? <laughs> oh, he just said Gligor. Gligor, nobody nobody really. Stonovich, Gligor. A lot of people uh, think he's annoying. A lot of people think he's a little bit of a badass. You know he's the dude that fights Letway. Knocked out Chris Kirsch at one of ours. Uh, I think he's fine to work with. A lot of people. Uh, most annoying? For me, most annoying would, would have to be Luke Welling as a personality and just his stupid gob running it all the time. We all know that Teddy's the alpha male in the commentary booth. Luke can't handle that, can't handle the truth. Like, few good men, which he is not one of. Who's the most attractive fighter in combat sports? Best looking. Ooh, Ooh I mean, like, that's a, that's a real, real tough one. Can we go with, like, a time... Ah, that makes me horrible. Like I am the guy from Thailand. I'm like, can we <laughs> can we go back to Rachel Rachel Ostovich in 2000 and like 13, 2014? She was she was old enough still back then. It doesn't make me make me terrible. Uh, 
Rachel Ostovich is one of the people I think was is kind of like the hottest in combat sports that's actually a fighter. Uh, who would you most like to have dinner with in the combat sports industry? Uh, have dinner with in the combat sports industry? Uh, you know, again, like I would, I would probably do kind of the celebrity over the uh, over the business because, like, you could easily go right. Like, I could easily right now go and be like, yeah. I'd, like to have it with like an art Davies, the guy that like it, it made it or a Dana White. Right. And, and, and do those, those big ones. Um, or again, be like McGregor. I want to sit down with McGregor and like go over like what could be future prod projects. Right. He would be a fun one, but I think just like on a life note and again, like who, and, and again, this is a person that like we we've been close to, you can see what's going on behind me and this there's a lot of those people that are in the industry. Mike Tyson would be fun to sit down and, and chop it up with about the future of tourism, Thailand and Tyson farms. So right. my usual question is uh, who would you most like by your side in a street fight, but I'll tweak it to who would you most like by your side in a two versus one with you guys being the two. Ooh. Okay. I think me and you versus Rampage Jackson. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'll try not to die. I'll try not to die. Yeah. <laughs> um, who, who's got the best hands in MMA right now? Who's got the best hands in MMA right now? I mean, Sugar Sean just did what he did, and obviously Sean just did what he did. But I would have to say that uh, the man that plays Sub-Zero on our upcoming – it's actually Sub Zero Junior. It's played by the one and only Tang Mo. He just came out with his own Tang Mojito, um, one of the best mojitos I've ever had. I would say Tang Mo has some of the hottest hands in combat sports right now. He can just lay them on your chin like like their meat on his grill because he's a chef in real life. Touch of an angel. Uh, yes. um, okay. Uh, who would make the best movie star in combat sports? Best movie star in combat sports. Huh? Yeah, he's right. I mean, you want to go on a reality note? Little Frog. Tarazam would she could probably do it, you know. Full metal mercenary. We've had her in the full in the in the fight circuit. She's already kind of a celebrity. She already kind of knows what she's doing, but she's like on the rise. But if you took her and you made her into a Mila Jovovich of Cambodia, which she already kind of is, you you understand. If you made her into a Cape Bake that can sail part. If you got her a resident evil, right? She's cute enough, athletic enough, and has the martial arts pedigree and the thespian chops. Did right? I the act chop, the acting chops to be able to do it. So I would I would get more female action stars up in my mix and say that I would think that uh yeah, Lil Frog would probably nail something. Who has the best fight IQ? Best fight IQ. Tell him all day. I mean, the way that that man thinks, you know what I mean? You know, and because he's not even in there, you know, because he's not in there and he's watching it from the side, he can break it down of what he wouldn't do, you know, like the ultimate keyboard warrior, right? Not just some punk off the street, but somebody that like talks, talks the talk and has never walked the walk. That's Teddy Mulvey. <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and uh all right uh okay who's got the coolest tattoos in combat sports i remember that alan belcher doesn't alan belcher is somebody that i'd probably like to work with in the future so i don't really want to put him down too much but i remember that horrible johnny cash tattoo that he, that, that he had um you know <clears throat> i like a lot of tattoos so I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, don't have them. Best have dressed, them. best dressed. <clears throat> best dressed. Yeah. Norbert and me, me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm like not on fire, but like, I'm okay. When I go fight circus and I throw on the vest, the vest being so important, then I'm probably in the top five, top 10, top 15, at least, you know what I mean? I'm with you. Um, Again, you when you say those questions to me, like best looking or best dressed, because I am, a, you know, a heterosexual married man in my 40s, 
I obviously think of like actual best looking like females. And then it, it's a, just a tough question because it puts you on the spot a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of it. Uh, we have less than two minutes. How on well the is clock. Paige Van Sant doing on like OnlyFans, by the way? Like, how, very well. Very well. How we, well is she doing? We have very one well. minute 40 on the clock. So let's do the last one. Who is your dream fight, past or present, in any weight class? Paige Van Zandt, Indian leg wrestling. Right? Right? Fight Indian, circuit, anyway. Indian leg wrestling triathlon that leads to... So it's me and her, right? And we have to do Indian leg wrestling then mud wrestling like stripes and I get to be John Candy. And then it's just the wheel of violence. Yeah, I, I lost like kind of the, where it was going funny wise. And I, I don't want to be like in a domestic violence trait thing with, uh, you know, Paige Van Zandt. But if she ever really did want to fight me, Paige, I'm looking at you. I would beat the shit out of her. <laughs> Was wow, that's we're ending on a high note, uh, which is great. Um, I'm just gonna stop this. I want of- Paige, I want Paige Van Zandt, Rachel Ostovich three in fight circus. Use that, use that. I'm gonna stop this so it definitely records. Uh, but it's been an absolute pleasure. You're the man, John Nutt. Yeah, I love you. Too. I love you too. Oh, you brother. I my See head you is up. Do this more. <laughs>